Hi everyone and welcome to this, this video on transition matrices, setting up a transition matrix. And yes, I did have to read it. It's a really long title, as all of them seem to be for general maths at the moment. My name's Darren from Maths Guru. Yes, M-A-F-F-S Guru. Uh, there for you to basically sign up for free. It's got all of the downloadable stuff behind me. Uh, lesson notes, VCAR exam questions, all sorts of stuff. And hopefully it's a really useful resource. Um, I'm not sure whether you can do this for me. I know that you're way too cool for school. But if you were to tell your teachers about my resource, as well. It might save them a lot of money from going to other resources and in fact you and later students from going to uh, other resources. And uh, the last thing for me, really needy, I will get started, I promise, I promise, I promise, is if you can sus subscribe to my YouTube channel. That little click from you, I know, I promise you, it's it's a lot of effort, I get it. Um, but so very few people watch my content um, that when somebody actually subscribes and I get to find out at the end of the day, you know, that an extra two or three people are there, it really does make this all worthwhile. All right, recording this stuff, I love recording videos. I want to make maths easier, um, but I give up so many times just because nobody out there is watching it. So if you can subscribe, that'd be great. Right, enough of the needy stuff. What are we doing? Guys, you can read this if you need to pause the video, but it's pretty much a whole new section of the course. We're going to build on the, the work we did previously on the matrices about adding, subtracting, and, and inverses, and identity matrices, and all that type of stuff. And now we're going to start putting it into a real world context, right? Now, transition matrices on the surface aren't particularly challenging. I promise you they're not particularly challenging. It's how we use them and how you understand them that's going to trip you up in sacks. Um, I don't think there's going to be too many sacks with lots of questions asking you to add them, uh, but I think there'll be a lot of questions here using transition matrices and whatever else. So maybe watch the video two or three times, he says, hopefully. Um, and ask me questions. Leave me uh, comments below if you're watching this on YouTube, um, and I'll do what I can to get back to you. But your CAS is so, so important here. I'm going to use the TI Inspire. I know the class pad is a really good calculator, uh, and, and I've used it in previous schools. Uh, but the TI Inspire and the class pad have very similar functionality for this. And if I tried to do both, it would just blow out the video. So hopefully, your class pad users, you will understand. Right. I'm leaving teaching. I've had enough. I don't get enough subscribers. I am literally dropping the mic, and I am giving up. I don't want to do this anymore. It's too hard. Talking to myself in a room, he says, lol. And I'm going to start a car hire business. I've decided what a great job that would be, sitting all day, just giving out cars, and well, that's it. Well, the problem is, mm, Melbourne is a bit saturated. There's a lot of car hire places here in some of the strangest places, if you notice. Um, so basically, I'm going to do it somewhere else. Yep, yeah, where? I've decided to go to Bendigo and Colac. Yes, no idea where Colac is. I know that some of my students are at Bendigo, and for that I'm internally sorry. Lol. Um, but seems like a good place to go. Colac looks quite pretty. It's got a sign that says, Welcome to Colac. Bendigo, look at those beautiful gardens and a palm tree or three. Hmm, lovely. Uh, so yes, I'm going to go there. Um, I've never been there before in my life, but I'm going to start some car hire places to go. Um, but what I've found out in my initial research, and this is because I've just been to the United Kingdom, is that basically cars don't always come back to where they hired them from. So when I went to the UK, I landed, I went to see my parents, and I hired a car in Huntingdon. And I sort of picked the car up and they said, well, where are you going to drop it off? And I went, oh, Heathrow Airport. They went, oh, that's a long way. And I went, not quite as far as Cornwall, which is where I'm going to take it. Um, and so they went, oh, okay then, well, we're going to charge you more money. I'm like, why? They went, well, because if you don't bring it back to where you started, then you're going to charge you more money. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. So I paid more. But the whole point was that actually a lot of cars don't get returned to where they start. Some cars do. Some cars don't. So I had to build that into my model. And I was sitting there trying to draw a diagram. And I'm going, hmm, how can I draw this best? And lo and behold, I came up with circles. I love a circle. It's a bit like insane. But I came up with a bit of a circle. And I thought, well, OK, then. Why don't I put uh, a B for Bendigo? and a C for Colac in a circle. All right, so there's a dot there and a dot there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use basically arrows to decide you know, what percentages of my cars are gonna stay where they are and which are going to change. Because obviously, some people are gonna hire it in Bendigo and leave it in Colac. Some people are gonna hire it in Colac and end up in Bendigo. And there are gonna be those people who are just gonna hire it in Bendigo and Colac and return it to Bendigo and Colac. So this was the diagram I came up with. I didn't come up with this, it's all story. Okay, so what does this 20% mean? Well, what that means is that at the end of each week, and I'm just gonna audit my cars week to week to week. Now I could do it day to day to day, but the question says week to week to week. I am going to lose 20% of my cars. No, I'm not gonna lose them, I, I know where they are. They're gonna go from Bendigo to Colac, all right? So 20% of my cars are gonna go there. 
and 10% of the cars that started at Colac are going to end up in Bendigo. Well, there's going to be a bit of an imbalance there. Do you see what might potentially happen? We'll see that one in a moment. This circle that starts at B and ends at B, and the arrows are important, says that 80% of the cars that start at Bendigo are going to end up in Bendigo. So they're the people who are going to have them for day trips, maybe. And at Colac, 90% of the people who have a car will return it to Colac. And again, that is a transition diagram. It's a diagram what is a transition. Now, the important thing to notice is that while there are percentages on here, all right, we can write percentages in two different ways. Generally speaking, we like the decimal equivalents, right? So 0 0.8, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and 0 0.9, and that becomes important later. So this part of the video, you're gonna to have to be able to draw transition diagrams. But where do matrices come in? I hear you ask. I know you didn't ask. All right, but we can actually write this as a transition matrix. Now, what's really important is the way these things are set up. Now, in the previous section when we did communication matrices, we actually had the rows as the start and the columns as the end, didn't we? Yes, so we had the rows as the start and the columns at the end. Well, lucky us, this all just flips on its head now. Why? Because our columns are our start, our rows are our end. So the first thing you've got to be very aware of is to make sure that you have start and N. So obviously in the context of the car thing, we're gonna have rented in and returned to start and finish. Order BC, all right, Bendigo Colac. Order left to right for my rows, have the same order going down in my, sorry, but left to right in my columns, same order in my rows, really important. Now, when we do the transition matrices, we don't use percentages. We don't put these whole number percentages in here. We use them as the decimal equivalents. So 0 0.8, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.9. Now let's just check what that actually means. Each figure, if you understand where it comes from, is really important. So that 0 0.8 says it is rented in Bendigo and it is returned in Bendigo. Again, look at where the number is situated. It's in the Bendigo column, the Bendigo row. So it started and finished in Bendigo 0 0.8. Why? Because that's what happened here. Bendigo to Bendigo 0 0.8. Colac returned to Bendigo. So started in Colac, returned to Bendigo. Colac to Bendigo, 10%, 0 0.1. Yeah, the other two values obviously can fill in from there. What is really important to notice is the columns of a transition matrix always add to one. And if they don't, you've made a mistake. You've got things in the wrong way. So let's just check 0 0.8 and 0 0.2, 1, 0.1 and 0.9 add up to one as well. So these are the important things that come up in SACs and what have you and exam questions and what have you. All right. So again, important stuff, start, columns, finished, rows. All the columns add up to one, make sure the orders are equivalent.